Good day mga Kabayan Techers! This is your The Kabayan Tech and today would be the last installment for data migration. We're going to move your data from a Windows PC to a Mac. So let's begin. In this last installment, we're going to transfer all our data from our Windows computer. But before we do the data migration, since Windows doesn't have a built-in migration assistant, so when you go to the support website for Apple, all you have to do is type Windows PC to a Mac data migration, or I'm going to share the link down below in the description. So this is the site that you're going to see. If your new computer, the OS is installed with either Monterey or Big Sur or any other supported operating system, there is a specific Windows Migration Assistant that you're going to download. In my case, we're going to download a version for Monterey. So let me just download this. Then the next screen will show up. It asks you to download. Click on the download button. I'm going to open it instead that I'm going to save it. It's going to install that software on this Windows computer. I already have a migration assistant downloaded prior to this video. I'm just going to do a repair similar to what you're going to do on install and it's going to do finish. And once that one is done, we're going to close the Internet Explorer that you're using. There will be a shortcut on the top left portion that says Windows Migration Assistant. I'm going to double click on that app. It will ask for verification that you wanted to run Migration Assistant. Click on yes. If, for example, you run Microsoft Edge, the program that you use to download it, it will show up here. We need to literally force quit it or turn it off. I'm going to look for Task Manager. And I'm going to quit this application for now. Look for Microsoft Edge. See here, it's running. Click on Microsoft Edge. I'm going to end task it. It won't show up on the list anymore on the task manager. Let me close the task manager and run again the Windows Migration Assistant. So when I click on continue now here, it doesn't show any programs that are running at the background. So when I click on continue, continue, and then I won't do send any statistics. Okay, so here it will say open your Mac, open Migration Assistant, and select from a Windows PC. So we're going to go to the Mac side. So on my Mac, I have a user set up on this Mac. I'm just going to log in. There's no data yet for this user. I'm not going to use this user profile. I'm going to use the user profile that's coming from my Windows. I'm going to press command spacebar and type migration assistant and it's going to give me a suggestion and then launch this. On this side, this might look familiar for you. Uh, these are the same windows that we are looking at at the previous videos that I have created when we were doing migration assistant. And then on this screen, instead of the first option of from a Mac, we're going to choose from a Windows PC. And then from the Windows PC, we click on continue. So from the continue screen, it will show up the Windows computer, which is on this list. If for example, the computer didn't show up, it means that the laptop or the desktop is not connected to the same network. These two computers, I have connected them on my Wi-Fi. So that's the reason why this one is showing up. So I click on this and click on continue. Once I click on continue, it will show up a number here. On the Windows side, it will show up the same number that I am looking at the Mac. I'm going to click on continue on my Windows computer. And it's going to analyze the data that it's going to transfer. While this one is analyzing, on the Mac part, it will show you the list of the users that are available to be transferred from your Windows computer. And here, I'm o I only have one user for my Windows computer. If you wanted to have them transferred all, you could put a check mark beside the folder. You will see another main folder here that will say other files. I will uncheck this one. The reason why most of the files that are in here 
are the programs that are only available for Windows. Especially for this one, it says it's a 24 gigabyte file that I'm transferring, which I cannot use on my Mac computer. So I'm going to uncheck the other files. So once I selected the folders that I wanted to transfer, I'm going to click on continue. Next screen, you're going to set up a password for the user profile that is coming from the Windows side. I'm going to set a password for that profile. And that would be my uh, profile password once the transfer is complete. I click set password. It will have a check mark. And then I'm going to click on continue. This window will show up because there is another profile that is already set up for this Mac. If this is a newly set up computer and you just took it out of the box and you are doing the migration from the start, this window will not show up. It's going to ask for that um, password, which is 1234. That's the one that I set up for the profile user. I'm going to click on OK and then continue. And then we're going to wait for uh, the data transfer to complete. On the window side, when, once you are doing the data transfer, it would look like this and it will say data migration successful. Once the data migration is completed, it will have a countdown. You could do a restart now. The Mac computer will restart. On the Windows computer, there's no other steps to do but to close that program and shut it down. This will take some time depending on the amount of data that was transferred, if it's more than 500 gigs, it, this one will take a few minutes. But we just transferred probably around 10 to 20 gigs. And it will say migration complete. You click on done. Then it's going to go back to the login screen. So you might notice now there are two profiles. This one is the initial one that you have created. If your computer is newly open, open from the box, you won't be seeing any other profile here except for the ones that you transferred from your Windows computer. So we're going to go to the Windows profile that we set up with four zeros. And once this one is setting up, if you want to set up some accessibility functions, you could set it up here. I'm going to select not now. And then data privacy would be continue. If you want to sign in with your Apple ID, you could sign it up here and put your email and also your Apple ID password. And it's going to send a verification code to any device that the Apple ID is linked. I'm going to set up later and I'm going to skip it. Analytics, I'm just going to skip that part. Screen time, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to set up later. Siri, I'm just going to disable it because I don't need Siri right now. And if your computer has a Touch ID module, it will ask you to set up your Touch ID. I'm going to set it up later and click on continue. I'm going to set my desktop to auto for now and click on continue. And once this one is done, what would be the desktop that you have on your Windows will also transfer to this uh, profile. If we go on to Finder, uh, some of your documents or downloads will also appear here, similar to the ones that I have downloaded on my Windows computer. If you have some files that are on your desktop, like folders, it will transfer to, but I don't have any folders on my desktop. And then some of your documents, if you have documents on your old computer then it will transfer here the things that you have to consider and to expect the windows applications that you are using on your windows computer won't transfer to this computer specifically if you're going to ask microsoft office there is a version of Microsoft Office for Mac that you could download for uh, the Mac computer. Either you could subscribe or buy the whole package. So this is the last installment for uh, the data transfer that we discussed with the previous videos that we have. I hope you learned uh, a few uh, tidbits when it comes to doing uh, data migration using Migration Assistant. Uh, there are other ways for you to do transfer. So in my case, I'm just using Wi-Fi. So this would be the most econo economical uh, because you're not going to buy a cable that you're going to use only one time. Also, um, click on the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. I noticed that there are a lot of people that are not yet subscribed. This will help my channel. And for the rest of the week for June, we're going to finish up some of the quick tips when it comes to your Mac. Again, thank you very much and have a good day.